Hey guys, Mike Bays here at Benton Door Stanford. This uh, really, I guess, the first video in the training videos we promised you guys. Uh, before we go on to anything else, I want to talk a little bit about the safety. If anything here that we show you goes against what your bakery has taught you or what your bakery policy is, just disregard what we say or do and do it the way you've been taught. We're going to talk about the clutches. Uh, we only spline them in one hand because there's just too many configurations. And sure enough, when you need to put a new clutch on, you're going to go in there and get it, and it's going to be the wrong hand. How do you know it's the wrong hand? The torque arm here, just think of that as an arrow. We train our we train our boys here that that's an arrow, and that must go in the rotation of the shaft. So we're going to take this shaft apart. Jimmy's going to help me here before you guys start sending a bunch of emails. He is my son. Uh, been working in on the bakery stuff since he's about 15 years old. He ain't as good looking as me, but he's a whole lot smarter. So any clutch sprocket you get from us is going to come with the thrust washer with the new sprocket. Final assembly, you want to put a little grease on that, just a little general purpose. My hands are too pretty to do that, so we're going to skip that step. Clutches are going to come with a thrust washer and the new key. It's important to have a thrust washer on each side of that sprocket so it should always remain free to spin. So thrust washer, key, there's our clutch, we put it on the shaft, sure enough it's set up to go counterclockwise, we need to go clockwise. So now we got to switch the handing on that. Now, these clutches are stainless steel. I've seen a few of them out there floating around that's made out of aluminum. I just don't know if I'd trust them, but I'm sure they're strong enough in the torque arm and stuff, but I wouldn't trust the set screws. Now, the clutch tool he's using here, if you get, haven't got a clutch tool, you you guys really need to get one of them. It uh, saves you a lot of time, a lot of heartaches. A lot uh, of pinched fingers. A lot of pinched fingers. Uh, if you hadn't got one, y'all just give them in here, leave a call, they'll set you up telling you the clutch tool. It's really hard to do one without a clutch tool. Now the springs over the years have changed colors as, you, as manufacturers have changed, uh, as other spring companies have been bought out. But for your auto loads, you got three primary springs. Your cross street and your tucker table is going to use the black spring, which is the weakest spring. Your in feed is going to use the blue spring, which is a medium weight spring. And your top transfer is going to use the real stiff spring, which is a red spring. Bread slicers and bread baggers might have some with stripes or there's gold out there, there's green, uh, there's some old white springs out there. If you're in doubt of what spring you should use, you guys just give us a call, explain what you're trying to do, and we'll, we'll, we'll guide you towards the right color spring. Your first inclination would always be just to flip the torque arm on the other side of the clutch, and you think, man, I've got it. But in reality, you don't, because then when you put it on, you're not going to be able to get your set screws to tighten them up because your torque arm is going to be in the way. So you, we actually have to shift the hand. So there's plastic spacer in between the uh, spring rod eye there. That allows the rod eye to pivot. You want to make sure that bolt's not too tight, but that you get your jam nut on the back side tight. Don't try to put it together without the little plastic washer in there. And we've tried bronze and, and other things, but the plastic works the best by far. And all we gotta make sure that it's, it doesn't got any shape to it, but it still pivots nice and free. A little tight. There we go, that nice and, nice and smooth. Over the years, these things used to, people used to refer to these as safety clutches. We don't we don't ever call them that. We call them an overload. We don't ever want someone thinking this is supposed to protect an operator. This is strictly to protect your equipment from itself. If something gets in a bind, you won't break all your machine apart. The cam follower has to be switched. I believe if he had switched that when he had torque arm off, it probably been a little easier. I but take the torque arm off again. Oh, well, he needs to take the torque arm off. Now, 
Now you're going to notice he's not, he's not going to take the torque arm and put it on the other side of the clutch. He's going to flip the torque arm over. <coughs> and y'all bear with us in these videos. We're not, uh, we're not doing these pros. We're trying to do all this in one take in real time. Same way you'd have to. If we just fade in and out and say we'll be back after we get it switched, you ain't going to figure nothing out on it. So we just uh, try and do it as, as much in real time as we can. Plastic washer in there too. Cam follower on the other side. And we're not going to we're not going to torque everything down and tighten everything up like you would, but uh, we're trying to keep these videos pretty short. Same thing with this. You want to make sure you got room to pivot but you don't have any side-to-side -side play. Now that clutch tool is going to come in real handy again. May I hold that for you? I wouldn't want to break a nail anyhow. Yeah. You also want to make sure your little clutch dog down there is free to slide up and down on the rod. This is the black spring, which obviously doesn't look too black because it's not really black, but it's called black. Clutch tool in, make sure you can get into it. All right, guys, we're ready to stall her now. I'm gonna slide it on there. Always put a little grease in there. Make sure when you put it on that your key is not driven into the bushing to that thrust washer because that'll bind that sprocket up. Use your clutch tool, set her free, and you're ready to tighten your set screws down. We always like to tighten the set screws, break them loose and tighten them again. They're not going to come loose that way. I think that about covers the clutch, guys. You go out there and cuss a little bit, laugh a little bit, work safe, work smart, and go home with all the fingers that you walked in the plant with. We'll have another video. I think we're going to come cover splitters on your hand slicer in the next video. And we'll let y'all know when that's coming out. Thank you.